Okay, so what I'm going to do now is give a summary presentation of the health effects of PM 2.5 by Arden Pope. You all watched this video for writing assignment two and wrote up a summary of it. So hopefully you all are familiar with the presentation and the points I'll be making. You've seen them before, but I just want to emphasize certain things. Okay, so let's go forward here. So again, for the writing assignment, you all watch the YouTube video and I present here the link again so you can refer back to that easily. And also some of the um, slides that I'm gonna have in this presentation come from this um, web link as a PDF of some of the slides he presented in the video, but there's uh, other slides as well. And they're probably more detailed than you guys would be able to understand, but I've taken some of those slides from this presentation and populated but this presentation with them. So I just wanted to um, acknowledge that. Okay, so there were four studies that um, were um, focused on in the video and were, part, were the ones that I asked you to focus on for the writing assignment. These, those were the Utah Valley studies, the Six City studies, the American Cancer Society study, and the Children's Health study. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll have a slide like you see here for each of those four, so you can easily see what the study type was, a short description of the study, what the exposure was, what the outcome was, and what the main findings were, okay? So this is just kind of a, like a thumbnail view of each of the four studies. And so you see here one with the Utah Valley studies, and as we go forward, you'll see ones for the other three. Okay, so um, Utah Valley studies, um, it wasn't exactly clear from the video, but to my interpretation, it most closely fits into a cross-sectional study. Remember what a cross-sectional study is. It's a snapshot in time where exposures and outcomes are looked at that time. So in the case of the Utah Valley studies, what they did is a kind of a version of that, where they looked, they took like a cross-sectional study of the period before and after the Geneva steel mill closure in the Utah Valley and found that air pollution dropped and hospitalizations dropped. And they looked at another cross-section of the times when the mill was open and did the same thing. In that case, they found that there was more hospital admissions and more polluted air. From that, they concluded um, that air pollution is causing PM air pollution, particulate matter air pollution, is, a str is strongly associated with short-term health effects and in the, as measured by hospital admissions for of various things. Okay, so again, study type cross-sectional, description, PM air pollution, and short, PME particulate matter air pollution, and short-term health effects. So notice short-term in this case. Exposure is the particulate matter pollution before and after the mill closure. That would be, quote, exposed group versus during the mill closure, which would be the non-exposed group because pollution levels would be lower at that time. So they kind of looked at the periods before and after mill closure and during and um, tag those, in a sense, to exposed and non-exposed groups. The outcome was hospital admission. So you're looking at, you know, the study design is, does PM pollution affect hospital admissions? And the findings were reduced PM pollution and hospitalizations when mill, reduced PM pollution and hospitalization when mill was closed, okay? So this is um, hopefully jives with your understanding of the study from your watching of the video. Okay, um, here's a plot of the results of the, the um, Utah Valley studies. And on the left here are PM10 concentrations, a form of PM. And the gray, um, kind of the darker hatched bars are times when the mill was open. And the white hatched bar is the times when the mill was closed. And on the left here is the mean PM10 over the study period for the months included in, in the study period. So if you average the PM10 over the entire study period, you would get this um, far left. And if you looked at the highest day and for the times before, after, and during mill closure, you would get this graph on the right. So in each of these cases, PM pollution was lower when the mill was closed, both in terms of the average and the highest day. 
daily average. Then if you look on the right here to various causes of hospital admissions, you see in all cases, whether it's bronchitis, pneumonia, or all reasons, when the mill was closed, a significantly lower amount of hospital admissions, corresponding to a lower amount of PM. So this is um, kind of um, at least evidence of an association of short-term health effects of, um, due to PM10 air pollution. Okay, the next study was the six city study and I'll spend the most time on this one because there's a lot of interesting points with this and it's fairly easy to uncomprehend how the study was designed. It's real well compact and well explained. This was a prospective cohort study. Prospective means going forward in time. And most cohort studies are prospective. Um, but a cohort means that individuals are enrolled and followed over time with respect to their exposure status and their outcome status. Okay, so the description of the six city studies was, um, again, the purpose was the PM air pollution and long-term health effects. In this time, the outcome was survival rates or mortality. So they're looking at whether air pollution, if exposed long-term over years and you know, many years, um, in this case, it was a 14 to 16 year follow-up. If exposure continuously over the period of high versus low air pollution would lead to long-term health effects. In this case, long-term health effects are gonna be measured on, in terms of survival rates or premature mortality possibility um, as air pollution increases. The different exposures are defined with respect to six US cities where it, um, participants were enrolled. Two of the cities were, quote, dirty cities, high PM pollution. Two of the cities were more intermediate, um, amounts of air, PM air pollution, and two were clean. So basically, different exposure groups were defined with respect to the cities that they um, lived in. Okay, and then they followed the cohorts with um, over these six cities um, of the participants in these six cities and looked at their survival rates. Okay, and the finding was that increased mortality rates of cohorts in the dirty compared to the clean city. So what that means is that people in the dirtier cities were dying faster. They had premature mortality. And more specifically, the relative risk of all-cause mortality was around 1.25, and we talked about what relative risk is in lecture for participants in dirty compared to clean cities, measured after 14 to 16 years of follow-up, okay? So um, there's a little thumbnail of the six city studies. Let me go through some slides really fast to emphasize some points. So you saw this point in the, this slide in the, presentation, and this is probably the most clear evidence from a visual point of view of the main point of the six city studies. So you have um, at the time of enrollment on zero, and then they followed up 16 years. So that's on the horizontal axis. On the vertical is the probability of survival, starting of course at one, because everyone was alive at enrollment. And then as forward in time, people, some participants in the cohort unfortunately died. And it looks, the way these curves kind of separate is that the more highly polluted cities had a lower probability of survival by the time of follow-up, and meaning that they're dying more quickly in the polluted cities rather than the clean cities. Okay, and these, you can see the symbols here for which city corresponds to which line. But this was, a, this was very clear evidence, and I believe this is the raw data when they adjusted for all kinds of confounders and age and smoking and things like that, they got the same type of association that you see here. So this is evidence of long-term health effects on mortality. So we saw with six with the Utah Valley short-term and now we're seeing evidence of long-term as well. Okay, this was another um, graphical tabular, in this case, presentation of the main point where you see the cause of death going down um, the rows. And then we'll come back to the smokers later in, you know, in, in this, this presentation. But let me just go to the far right column, most versus least polluted city. So if you take the most polluted city of those six, the least polluted city of the six, and take a risk ratio of the most divided by the least in terms of um, mortality rates, um, tagged with all mortalities or those that are pinned to different causes, you'll see in all cases they found a risk ratio greater than one, meaning that people were dying, the risk of dying was greater in the most polluted cities compared to the least polluted cities. 
Um, we said that, that the all-cause mortality was around 25% higher in the most polluted city or a risk ratio of 1.25, 1.26. So that's, we'll round that to 1.25 to make it a cleaner number. Okay. And then other, if due to lung cancer, 1.37, due to cardiopulmonary disease, 1.37, and all other, a very weak, um, small increased risk of 1.01. Okay, so that's where this 1.25% higher risk of mortality due to air pollution comes from. It's from this number here. Now let's kind of chew on this table a little bit more because there's a lot more information than just this, these red numbers here. One of the things that you see are these parenthetical numbers on below each of the risk ratios, most versus police, least polluted cities. Okay, these are the 95% confidence intervals. That's something we covered in lecture um, 10, it must have been. We talked about various sources of uncertainties in interpreting the results of epidemiological studies. And one of those is that the results could be due to chance. The way that that's determined, whether that's um, probable or not to a certain tolerance, is to look at the 95% confidence intervals. And I'll refer you back to the lecture to give a, get a um, formal presentation of what that means. But in a nutshell, it means that this is the range of possible numbers that you see in the parentheses for risk ratio that we'd anticipate just due to mere chance and the random effects of the data itself. And you can imagine rolling a dice that you get different results all the time. Well, if you take data from a sample and then take the, a different set of data from a different sample, you'd get different results, even if the population you're sampling from is essentially the same, like men, women, smokers, whatever it is. So the way you interpret this to see if the result of the red numbers here, the result of the study, the, is within the range that can, it exceeds chance is that we want to see if risk ratio of one, which means no association, is within the bounds of these confidence intervals. If it is within the bounds, we cannot rule out chance. Just by chance alone, you might have a risk ratio of one. If the parenthetical range is outside the range of one, we would say that um, we can rule out chance, and this is statistically significant, in this case, the 1.26. So let's um, go ahead and take these one by one and we can kind of decide together what the answer should be. Okay, oops, that's a stray. Oops, let's just do them all. <laughs> okay, one by one. So here, the, the all cause, mortality due to all causes had a risk ratio of most versus least polluted city of 1.25, meaning 25% higher risk of dying due to all causes for the most polluted city compared to the risk the least polluted city. Okay, the confidence intervals are between 1.08 and 1.47. This does not contain a risk ratio of one, meaning no association. Therefore, we'll say these results are statistically significant, meaning that even if we factor in chance, we still won't get a risk ratio of one to 95% confidence. Therefore, we say this result is statistically significant to 95% confidence. And that gives some confidence Kind of that this number is real and chance is not a result of mere chance. Let's go to lung cancer. If for all cause, oh, no, sorry, sorry, for cause of death due to lung cancer, the risk ratio was 1.37 most compared to least polluted cities. However, in this case, you'll see that the range is one is contained within the range between 0.81 and 2.31. So there's a large variation of this statistical result that can result due to chance such that even risk ratio of one is contained within that. So we would say this result is not statistically significant. Um, now other studies after this might have found a statistically significant association between premature mortality due to particulate pollution and lung cancer. Um, you'd think there, that makes sense that it would be true, but based on these study results alone, this would not be statistically significant. Okay. Cardiopulmonary disease, we'll go through these more quickly. The range of the 95 confidence intervals is outside of one. One is not contained in this range. This is statistically significant. So there's a high um, association with premature mortality and cardiopulmonary disease, premature mortality, and um, within the most versus least polluted cities. 
So this is um, something that might have been surprising in the study that it's the not so much the lung cancer perhaps, but it's the effect on the, the heart itself that's causing the premature mortality. All other cause mortalities are not statistically significant, and this is not surprising given the low risk ratio itself that you know the range would kind of span across one. Okay, so that's how you kind of use the 95% confidence intervals to determine statistically significant results. Statistically significant results are the more trustworthy results. That's why we care about this. Okay, finally, let's, come, let's do this thing about smoking. This was an interesting point made in the video that if we um, reconcile the increased risk of all-cause mortality due to smoking 25 pack years um, of cigarettes with the results for the most versus least polluted cities risk ratio for all cause mortality, they are effectively the same. Now you see the numbers are different, but if we translate this smoker number into a population basis, we'll see we'll get the same number. This is one of the points that Arden Pope made in the video is that this, this result is equivalent to smoking 25 pack years um, of cigarettes on a population level. Now let's, let me sh let's go through that and see what he was talking about. 25 pack years means 25 packs per year. It's um, considered an average um, smoking rate, at least back then, for smokers. Okay, so let's set this up. Okay, PM 2.5 premature mortality um, of 1.25 is equivalent to smoking 25 pack years on a population level. Okay, so we got two numbers. Air pollution mortality. We found a risk ratio due to all cause mortality, um, all cause risk ratio of premature mortality due to all causes of 1.25 for the most versus least polluted cities, 25% higher. Okay, smoking mortality. Well, the risk ratio for smokers is two for premature mortality compared with non smokers, assuming smoking 25 pack years. Okay, typical amount. The risk ratio for non-smokers we'll say is one because um, we're defining that relative to non-smokers. So we'll, that's just a definition. So we got twice as likely for smokers, risk ratio for non-smokers equal to one by definition, and an average of 25% of the population smokes in the US. This was back then, maybe it's less now. So we have these three numbers. And if we um, think that, okay, well, what is 25% of people smoke, that means there's three non-smokers for every one smoker, okay? So four people all together, three don't smoke, one smokes, 25% of the people smoke, okay? So let's take these numbers here and see how we can take the smoking numbers and it equates back to equivalently 1.25 on a population level. Okay, smoking, okay, so let's just um, go through this slowly. The Smoking, well, so what is the smoking mortality on a population level? We'll call that RR underscore pop. So the risk ratio on a population level of premature mortality due to smoking to 25 pack years, okay, is the number of smokers times the risk ratio of smokers plus the number of non-smokers times the risk ratio for non-smokers divided by the total number of people. So we're basically partitioning um, the risk ratios for the smokers and non-smokers and combining them together in to get a total population level risk ratio of smoking across an entire population. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers here. So the risk ratio for, there's one, for, there's remember there's three smoke non-smokers for every one smoker. So we got one smoker, the risk ratio for smoking is two, three non-smokers, the risk ratio of non-smokers is one, and we divide that by the total number of people, which is three plus one equals four, let's say. Okay, so we got all the numbers here. Let's just do the math and see what we come up with. Well, two times one is two, three times one is three, three plus one is four. That's two plus three divided by four, which equals five divided by four, which equals 1.25. Same as due to the PM 2.5 pollution for most versus least polluted cities. Okay, so when we translate the smoking risk ratio on a population level, that comes up to be the same as the risk ratio of dying due to premature mortality for air pollution from dirty to least polluted cities. This was, as Arden Pope said, an astounding result. And it is, if you think about it, quite shocking that you know, the, diff the, the risk of dying 
due to air pollution, particulate air pollution in a dirty city versus a clean city is the same as smoking 25 packed years of cigarettes on a population level. So I just wanted to show you where that came from. So just to kind of go back, this, this calculation will not be on the exam, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to show you where it came from. But um, I do want you to have a good sense on how 95% confidence intervals are used to deem statistical significance. And um, let's see, um, and yeah, just all the other summary points here about the six city studies. Okay, finally, to conclude, I have some slides here on the American Cancer Society study. This was a retrospective cohort study. In this case, what happened was they took a previous cohort study that was prospective and reanalyzed the results going, you know, once they were in retrospectively by tying air pollution exposure and looking at the outcomes. Okay, the outcomes were already um, recorded from the original cohort study by the American Cancer Society, looking at different kinds of exposures in air pollution. But then they went back and tied air pollution to it and looked at the results again. They, again, PM air pollution and long-term health effects, looking at mortality. I think there were some other things they were looking at as well, but we'll focus on mortality. And then, as I said, they used the data from a previous ACS study and then reanalyzed the data, as I just explained. The exposure was PM pollution across many US cities and Increase found findings increased mortality rates as PM 2.5 pollution increase, a risk ratio of 1.17, I think 17% higher was the all cause mortality um, increase of dying if you live in a polluted city. Finally, the Children's Health Study. This was a prospective cohort study. This time they were looking not at premature mortality, but they were trying to get at what was the cause of these long term health effects. How is it that air pollution? can predispose people, particularly air pollution, can predispose people to a premature risk of death. And one of the hypotheses that kind of underpinned the study was that this was something that might have been kind of started at early childhood. So they looked at children. Description, PM air pollution and health effects of children. The exposure again was PM pollution in different cities across Southern California. And we saw air, Southern California a lot in this class and pollution levels vary with across the air basin. The outcome was the lung development and lung capacity. And the findings were the reduced lung capacity and development in children living in more polluted cities. Again, very shocking that um, these effects can hit at such a systematic level. Um, so that is um, a summary of the, six, of the um, health effects of PM 2.5, Howard and Pope. Again, this is just hopefully this will help you study for the final. Again, everything here is things I can ask. The only thing I will not, like I said, test you on is this link from this, the details of how I tied smoking to premature um, to the pollution risk ratios on a population level. This this stuff here. I just wanted to show you where that came from. Okay, so let me stop the share and we'll quit here. Um, hopefully this was understandable. I didn't go off the script like my previous videos. Just kind of talk you through it. Hopefully it's clear. Let me know if not. Enjoy.